Hey, hit it up the park. Hit it up the park. Hit it with a strike. Hit it with a strike. From the national anthem, anthem. to the bottom of the night. I'm in Slendy, Ego. Slendy, Ego. Slendy, Ego. Slendy, Hey, you already know what's up. What's that? Another home run. But you know the job ain't done. To behold that trophy up. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 506 of the Talking Friars podcast and YouTube show. Ben Fadden with you here. It is November 2nd, 2023. The Major League Baseball season is officially over. Congratulations to the Texas Rangers, Will Venable, Bruce Bochy, Chris Young, Ian Kinsler, I think, is in their front office, Travis Jankowski, Austin Hedges. I think there's one other Padres former front office person that's there with the Rangers. Congratulations to them. They are your World Series champions. And it's it, me watching that game last night and seeing the Texas Rangers celebrate. I couldn't sit there and not think about how that's going to feel one day when the Padres are able to win that World Series, you know, because that was the Rangers' first World Series championship ever. So just hoping one day. Don't know if it's going to be next year. Shoot, the Rangers, did we think that they were going to go win the World Series the way that things had finished in their regular season? I don't think a lot of people thought that. The Arizona Diamondbacks finished with like two more wins than the Padres did in the regular season, and they end up going all the way to the World Series. So you don't have to win over 100 games to go win the World Series. So it could be next year. It could be the year after that. It could be 30 years from now. Who knows when that time's going to be, but I can't wait for that to happen and be able to have the entire city of San Diego um, be the happiest that they've ever been. Um, whenever the World Series champion is, uh, you know, running on the field and they're dogpiling, I always think about that one day that Padres fans, Padres players, they're going to get that feeling. We're going to be able to have that feeling that Texas Rangers fans got last night that the Houston Astros fans have gotten a couple times here, that the Atlanta Braves fans have gotten, the Washington Nationals fans have gotten, and Red Sox and go on and on, all the past champions. Um, you know, it's, I'd imagine it's the best feeling in the world. I know that I was on like cloud nine when the Padres beat the Dodgers in the NLDS to advance to the NLCS. Like in my lifetime, I'd never experienced that with, you know, my, my favorite hometown team before i just never experienced that uh but the world series would just be on another level getting to the world series would be on another level so can't wait for that now getting to the padres topics now that we're getting really into the off season here there's going to be a lot that is going to be coming down here a lot to talk about what moves should the padres make i'm sure we'll get to that here a little bit down the line as this off season progresses but I think first up on the agenda is who is going to be the next Padres manager. And the update there is there's going to be two more candidates, it seems like, interviewed. Right now, we know that Benji Gill is interviewed. He interviewed on Tuesday. Ryan uh, Flaherty is interviewed. Mike Schilt has interviewed. Maybe Phil Nevin. And then there's a mystery candidate. That's what it seems like right now. The Padres could have a decision made by next week. I think that's what Kevin Acey put in his article in the Union Tribune yesterday. So that's pretty much the latest update. Again, I'll say it like I said it yesterday. I think Mike Schild is probably the safest pick for this Padres team for A.J. Preller right now. There's a relationship there. It's a guy that has managerial experience. You can keep Ryan Flaherty on the staff if you if A.J. Preller really wants Ryan Flaherty to continue being on this Padres coaching staff. And this could be AJ's last manager. So I want him to go with someone that he truly believes. Not just go with the external candidate that will bring excitement to the fan base. He should not care about what the fans think. If your job is on the line, which we don't even know if it is, with Peter Seidler being, you know, enabling him to continue running the ship. But let's say it's his last manager. I know if I was in that position, I would want to go hire the guy that I want. I would give zero you know what's about what anyone else thought. I want my guy. If I get fired, well, hey, I hired my guy. We went down together instead of me getting fired because someone I didn't truly want to hire ended up not working out, right? So stay tuned, obviously, for updates there. The big focus of this show, though, 
was the piece that came out in The Athletic yesterday from Dennis Lynn, Ken Rosenthal, Evan Drellich about the San Diego Padres recently taking out $50 million in a loan to help cover their payroll in 2023. The article starts out here, despite selling more tickets this season than all but one MLB team, the San Diego Padres took out a loan for about $50 million in September to address short-term cash flow issues and meet their obligations, including player payroll. People briefed on the team's finances told The Athletic. I saw this and was like, holy crap. Another thing about the Padres, we already know there's stuff going on about the manager search, the drama between Bob Melvin and A.J. Preller, especially at the end of the season. All the articles that came out, it's never a dull day with this franchise. There's always something going on with this franchise, isn't there? And I do want to note, to be fair to the Padres, because I don't want to overreact to this, The Athletic here did note MLB teams commonly tap into lines of credit to pay their bills, prompting some officials in the sport to suggest any concern should be tempered because the Padres were ultimately credit worthy enough to draw the loan. But other officials briefed on the team's finances who were not authorized to speak publicly viewed the Padres situation as worrisome. Obviously, when I see $50 $50 million loan in a headline. Padres had to take out a $50 million loan. I'm sorry. I'm not just going to sit there and say everything's fine. Everything's okay. But I'm not going to sit here and say Peter Seidler is going to sell the franchise. Uh, but I think that, look, we shouldn't be shocked that there, that this news is coming. Was I expecting this news to come out? No, especially during the World Series. Like, I'm not expecting this news to come like $50 million in a loan. That feels like a lot of money to Peter Seidler. Probably not a lot of money, but to someone like me, I mean, it'll, it takes me years to pay off a $15,000 loan, a $50 million loan. Like that doesn't seem normal. There's so are there other teams? What I would want to know that wasn't included in this athletic article is how many teams had to take out a loan how many teams took out a $50 million loan like the Padres had to? And by the way, it was noted in this article that the Padres actually asked for a $100 million loan. In September, the Padres had a third-party lender willing to loan the club $100 million. The team asked MLB for permission to receive close to the full $100 million, according to people briefed on the team's finances. MLB gave the team permission to draw roughly $50 million, which the league deemed a sufficient amount for the team to cover its expenses for the year. So they, they thought that they needed, right? You don't, I don't take out a loan for way more than what I think I need. Right. I mean, you can get it refunded, but if they truly, it seems like what's close to a hundred million dollars over 80 million. Like how much did they ask actually ask for? And then $50 million is what Major League Baseball allowed and deemed that, yeah, this is enough to cover your expenses. But $50 million, that seems like a lot of money to take out for a loan. Now, if we do the math, it does, you can connect the dots why the Padres had to take this loan out. Major League Baseball only paid the Padres 80% of what they were supposed to get in 2023 from their TV deal. Because remember, Bally Sports, they didn't pick up Padres games for the rest of the season. Mid-season, they just dropped them. Diamond Sports is Bally Sports' parent group. So that's a lot of money. They're, I mean, the Padres, they were in the middle of a $1.2 billion TV deal. 20-year deal with Diamond Sports, Bally Sports, whatever you want to say. In the middle of a 20-year deal, $1.2 billion. You spread that out over 20 years. You're getting a lot of money per year for that deal. So that's a lot of money that the Padres didn't get there. They don't have a TV deal in the future. Kevin Acey, I thought it was interesting in his article yesterday about this. He said that Major League Baseball is going to be producing the games in 2024 again. So does that mean the Padres don't have a TV partner? Does that mean Major League Baseball knows the Padres aren't going to be able to pick up one? So we're just going to do the whole your view thing again for those that like have Cox your view or you have to pick up the team specific mob.tv package for what was it like 20 bucks a month something like that like 
that's that's what we're going to have to do again in 2024 because they won't be able to find a TV deal. They don't have a long-term TV deal, so there's that. And then the Padres, they obviously expected to make the postseason. And not just make the postseason, but they expected to go deep into the postseason. They probably were hoping that they'd get a World Series. And the further that you get in these postseason rounds and you have these home playoff games, that's a lot of money. That's millions of dollars that the San Diego Padres would be receiving for these playoff games that they didn't this year. Millions of dollars that they should have received from their TV partner that they didn't get this year because that company bailed on Padres games in the middle of the season during that Miami series, if you remember that. So you can connect the dots why the Padres needed a loan, but it is concerning. It's like Peter Seidler allowed A.J. Preller to spend all this money, was totally okay with it. Seidler went to spring training and said, Manny, here's your contract. Here's the money you want. Here you go. Some Padres people in the front office were okay with Manny Machado, him just playing it out and becoming a free agent and just maybe bringing him back, risking that. And guess what? He would have made less money, I think. If he would be a free agent, they wouldn't have had to give him $350 million over 11 years. They could have given him less. I don't know how much less, and I'm not saying that I would have been okay with the Padres allowing Manny to hit free agency, like I, I think Manny Machado is someone that you want here long term. But it is a valid point when you're you're bringing up this, right? If the Padres wouldn't have given Xander Bogarts two hundred eighty million dollars, maybe they bring him to the Padres, but no team was coming anywhere close to that. So if the Padres give Xander two fifty or whatever, would they have to take out a huge loan like this? If they didn't give Jake Cronenworth that extension or at least that amount of money, you Darvish, that amount of money on an extension, would they have to take out a loan? You know, there's a lot of questions that you could ask here about the Padres spending. And obviously, there's a lot of stuff I can get to in this article, which I will hear in a little bit. But the main thing I think a lot of Padres fans think when they read this is, okay, well, Juan Soto's gone now. There's no way they're bringing him back on an extension. They're not going to give him $500 million in free agency, which I expect that's what he's going to ask for in free agency. Now, will he get it? That's a totally different question, right? But I just, I'm right now, I'm at the point where I don't see the Padres bringing Juan Soto back. And I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe I'd be surprised because I think that they should be going all in still for 2024. But I, I would not be shocked if the Padres traded Juan Soto before this season started or before, at least before the trade deadline of this 2024 season. I would not be surprised because I'm sorry, when you read, they had to take, they wanted more than 50 million. They took out a $50 million loan to pay off these costs. You're telling me that they're going to be completely okay with next year's payroll. I know that they're trying to significantly lower it, but they're going to be completely fine. Like we got to remember no TV deal. The Padres fans are selling out almost every game. Is that Are they going to have as good of attendance next year, especially at like the beginning of the season? Maybe some fans are like, hey, maybe I don't want to spend the money on these tickets. I just want to wait to see if it's actually worth it to go to as many games to see if the Padres are actually for real instead of going to as many games as they did this past season and then being disappointed. Is the attendance going to be as good? I think the attendance is still going to be great. Padres fans are going to show up, but are there going to be as many sellouts as this past season? Less sellouts, less people in the seats, less money coming in, right? The uh, the City Connect jerseys and the merchandise, are the sales going to be as great for that stuff as it was? Partnerships and sponsorships. Haven't the Padres already maxed out on sponsorships and partnerships? I mean, who wouldn't want to be a partner with the Padres? after going to the NLCS in 2022, going into 2023. I don't know. To me, it seemed like they're at an all-time high with people that are partnering with the team and ads and all that. I'm sure there's small ways that they can add some more ad money coming in and incorporate different things in the broadcast and all that. But they already got the jersey, the jersey patch sponsor. It just feels like a, there's a lot of ads around Petco Park on the walls and 
you know, on TV, the center field graphic and the, the pitching mound. I think that's Saquon. Jack in the box up at the, the right field foul pole, like um, the Western Medal. There's ads there. In the off season, they're doing a bunch of concerts and rodeos and the the golf stuff, the golf holes that they put uh, on the out in the outfield at Petco Park. Like it just feels like they're doing a lot already. Like how much more can they do? So yeah, this this is concerning a little bit. I'm not saying that I'm thinking that Peter Seidler is going to have to go sell the team. And if you go ask the Padres, of course they're going to tell you everything's fine. Everything is not fine. I'm not saying. Everything is a, you know, everything's on fire, but everything, I, I refuse to believe everything is fine. But of course, that's what Eric Gruppner is going to say in a statement when he's asked to make one by the athletic. He says here, the Padres organization continues to have access to all the resources, financial and otherwise. It needs to build a championship caliber team for the fans of San Diego. We established a capital, a capital plan for 2023 with our ownership group and lender partners and are operating our business in accordance with that plan. So pretty much like, yeah, the loan was planned, but I'm sorry. Like if I'm operating major league baseball team, yeah, props to Peter Seidler and the ownership group for wanting to win. But I, I, I don't think I would want my plan to include taking out a $50 million loan asking for, they asked for more than 50, close to 100 is what this article is saying. I don't want that to be part of my plan, to be asking for a almost a $100 million loan, getting $50 million at the end of a year to cover costs. Is that really that good of a plan then? Or was it them superstar hunting and then they figured, figured it out you know, as they went, oh shoot, we're not making the postseason. Oh shoot, there goes our TV deal. And now we have to ask for a loan. That's what it feels like. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Like, no wonder why they're going to try to decrease the payroll a bunch in 2024. No wonder why we're hearing about these MLB debt service regulation rules or whatever it's called. Uh, Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association, I think, declined comment to this article. $250 million payroll, third most, third highest in baseball, $3.3 million tickets sold like are they going to get better than that in 2024 in the regular season like that's hard for me to imagine Padres fans showed up this was the most hyped season in franchise history they showed up is it going to be as good you know so now if they make the postseason they're going to get a lot more money coming in so they can make up for that they can actually make more money in 2024 than they do in 23 but as we saw this season it's not a guarantee that they make the postseason you know, you can't bake that in. And Eric Gruppner, I know that he told Kevin Acey, I think this was in spring training, yeah, this is a risk that we're taking here. Like, if we don't make the postseason, we realize that it's a risk. Well, didn't make the postseason, and here's what's happening. Um, I'm just going through this athletic article here. The player costs were not unexpected entering the year, an indication that a turn of events late in the year might have exacerbated a need for the loan. A Padres official who was not authorized to speak publicly said that was not the case. The official said, we anticipated we may need it at some point this year. We're not in crisis. We're managing the business responsibly. We will continue to do that going forward. And this is the managing the business responsibly part of it where, okay, and it, I think it's some people, obviously not to the $50 million loan part, but you can probably transfer this into your own lives okay you overspend maybe just take it down to like really small scale you overspend at the ballpark you overspend somewhere at a sporting event or something at the mall uh on a trip on vacation well when you come back you're not going to spend for a couple of weeks or a month right you're, you're going to really really try to minimize your spending only on things that you absolutely need to get back to zero, if that makes sense, like in in debt or, you know, um, to, to get back into that plan, right? And so this is what the Padres are probably doing here by de decreasing payroll in 2024. And maybe this is what their goal is going to be from 2024 and beyond. Try to keep it like below the, the luxury tax, but just below right there, 
you know, you have the big contracts, but you also have hopefully some young prospects coming up, not making much money at all. And that can help you not have a $250 million payroll. And that's, we know that that's a fact here is that the Padres are not going to have a $250 million payroll year in and year out. For any Padres fan that thought that this is what the Padres were going to be for the next decade, they were going to be signing these superstars every year. I don't know what to tell you. Like that just was not going to happen. We're not in New York. We're not in Los Angeles. Now, I think San Diego, like Peter Seiler has said it in press conferences about us being like the eighth biggest market or something in the country. Something like that. I think eight was what maybe it was media market or mar I don't know what it, what he was referring to. I forget. But Peter Seiler did mention that. And he's like, no, I think we can spend money. And he has spent it, but it's not going to, they're not going to sign $280 million contracts with players. That's not going to happen every offseason. And I think a lot of fans would say that shouldn't have happened this past offseason with Xander. If you wanted to really make a great effort at bringing back Juan Soto, which I don't know if the Padres can do with what is happening here. And Juan Soto already, it's not like he, it feels, at least to me, it doesn't feel like Juan Soto really wants to come back to this Padres team and would be like Joe Musgrove, I'm saying, right? Where he'd be willing to take a discount to not go to free agency. Feels like uh, Juan Soto is pretty set on going to free agency. He may be interested in coming back, but he's not going to be interested in coming back for $280 million. No, he's coming back for 400 plus. He's probably going to want $500 million. And if the Padres don't offer that to him in an extension, then he's not going to sign the extension. That's That's how I think that Juan Soto and Scott Boris are going to be thinking they're going to be willing to bet on themselves in this walk year and then they'll see what happens and the Padres I don't see that they're in a spot right now where they can sit there and offer Juan Soto a 500 million dollar extension maybe they'll offer 450 I don't even know if we're going to hear reports that they will offer Juan Soto significantly more than what the Nationals offered and significantly I say that because in Juan Soto and Scott Boris's eyes, significantly is not 450. Nats offered 440. Hey, significantly more, $10 million more. 10 million is a lot to us, obviously, but significantly is probably like 480, 500. Really make a big effort to, to keep Soto. I don't see the Padres being in that spot to do that. And if they want to get under that $200 million number or get around that, an easy, easier way to make that happen is by dealing Juan Soto. So I would not, as I said earlier, I would not be shocked to see Juan Soto get traded. I don't want him to get traded. I want the Padres to just go all in again in 2024. I, I, you can go in, you can go all in and still decrease the payroll because there's like, I, I get it. So maybe some fans would say you're not going all in because you're not bringing Blake Snell back or you're not bringing Josh Hayer back. But I'm talking about how you bring in free agent players maybe it's not on a long-term deal but you're bringing in free agents that you think can help you win and you're still trying to go win a world series that's what i mean you still have juan soto on this team you still have these big players on this team and then you add to it again not the biggest contracts but you add to it still you show the fan base that you're trying to win i want them to do that for 2024 with juan soto so when 2024 ends regardless of how it ends, they win the World Series, or they don't, whatever. Peter Seiler can sit there at night and say, I don't regret what we did. Because we tried. At least we tried. That's what I want in 2024 for this Padres team. But if it's a Major League Baseball mandate that they have to get under a certain number, if it's Peter Seidler's mandate that they have to get under a certain number, then, you know, A.J. Preller, who gave up a ton for Juan Soto, he might not have a choice. He might have to deal Juan Soto and try to get the most back that he can that can help this team and in the future and get the best deal back for Juan Soto. And then you see what happens. And maybe you bring in a one or a two year deal guy that can give you some offense still. It's not going to be Juan Soto, but that's just, you know, you put yourself in this position by giving some of these contracts out. That Looking back, it's obviously easy in hindsight to say you didn't need to do that. I personally am still not going to give up on these players that were given these contracts. I'm not going to give up on Xander Bogarts after one season. 
I'm not going to give up on Jake Cronenworth when he hasn't even started his extension yet. I'm not going to give up on you, Darvish, because it sure seems like he works his butt off to prepare for starts. He finds ways every offseason to try to get better. He has a bunch of pitchers. So, like, this guy knows what he's doing in Major League Baseball. I'm for sure not going to give up on Joe Musgrove one year into this extension. I'm not giving up on Manny Machado. Are there some things that I don't like? Some things that I didn't like that were said from some of these players, some of their actions? Sure. But I'm not going to give up on these guys when I've seen it before. You know, even with someone like Eric Hosmer. Remember that guy? Yeah, that was fun, right? I didn't give up on him after one or two years. No, I gave him a big sample size. And then I was like, okay, this guy sucks. This guy's like the worst contract in franchise history. What are we doing here? This guy needs to be off the team. This guy is hurting the team. What are we doing? I am definitely not at that point with these guys. I still believe in these guys, but they better perform because this is the Padres team. This is the core. They're here. For the next decade, a lot of these guys are here for a long time. Seven years, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, five years with Suarez and Musgrove or four more years, right? The guys are here, Darvish. They're here. So they've got to perform. And Padres fans, they're going to show up still. But are they going to, is, are there going to be as many fans as there were this, this past season? Because this past season was nuts at Petco Park. Padres fans did their job. Is it going to be like that again in 2024? And if they miss the postseason, then they're going to be even more, they're going to be in more trouble. No TV deal still? Are they going to agree to one in the offseason? If not, there's question marks about that. And then you're going to have other teams in baseball that have a TV deal. They're having millions of dollars coming in that the Padres aren't having coming in. And so they might have an advantage that the Padres don't. But again, you could point to, well, the Padres, they they kind of put themselves in this situation. So I'm at the point, you know, with this article, it was, it, it's kind of incomplete because I want to see, like, in comparison, how many teams took out a big loan? How many teams took out $50 million in a loan? Is this common? I know that it was said it was kind of common in the article, like teams do take out loans. But this much? Is it common for teams to ask for $100 million in a loan? I don't know how common that is. What are the other, and teams won't give this information out. We don't know about this about the Padres. Like their exact book, like their exact numbers, their exact revenue coming in, the exact money that had to be paid out. And again, let's remember, this isn't money that is just paid to the payroll. There's a lot of things that are involved here that the Padres have to pay to all of the employees that work for them. There's the coaching staff. There's the front office staff. There's the support staff. There's different salaries for those people. Like there's a lot of different things that play into this. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if there's any more information that comes out about this. Obviously there's the manager search that, is still going to, it's ongoing right now. And then we're, we're headed into the off season player option decisions, club option decisions, free agency trades. The GM meetings are starting, I think on Monday, the winter meetings in December, man, this team is never boring. At least that's, that, that's the good thing for, for me at least. And for, for other people that talk about this team, for other Padres fans, maybe you like that. It's, there's always something to talk about. But I think a lot of Padres fans would be like, man, can't, can't we just be like, I don't know, the Braves, where we can talk about stuff about, you know, them on the field, but is there always something about the GM and the manager and they're asking for a bunch of loans, a bunch of money in the loan? There's always something. A new manager hiring that needs to take place coaching staff, uh, the star player, maybe he has to get traded. Like, can't we just be one like a less drama-filled team? That's how I feel sometimes, but 
this is where we were born for some of us, for a lot of us. And this is just the situation that we're in. It's not like we're going to jump ship and go be a fan of another team. Like we, this is just who we are. We're Padres fans. We're San Diego sports fans. We're all in it together. So hopefully things can turn around here. Uh, before I end this episode, just want to go through some of this article more. Seidler is engaged, according to the official that spoke to The Athletic here. It is false that because of Peter's condition, we are not in a position right now to do something that we otherwise need to do. Seidler was not available for an interview, so it looks like he's sort of involved, but not as involved, which is understandable because he is still recovering. We have not heard from Peter Seidler since he had that statement that went out the day of that the meeting the morning of the meeting at like eight o'clock in the morning say that he has full support in his current leadership team and then obviously Bob Melvin ends up leaving after he says he wasn't going anywhere essentially Preller said Melvin wasn't going anywhere haven't heard from Seidler since so hopefully everything is going well there for him and he is recovering well because that's what matters the most. And hopefully we can hear from him at some point in the offseason. I'm not asking to hear from him today, like his recovery is what is most important. But I think a lot of Padres fans want to hear from the person that is steering, the sh like literally steering the ship, like money-wise, the guy that is in control here. Now, it's not just Peter Seidler. It was noted in this article that there are, I think, 24 or 25 other owners for this team, something like that. I don't know if this was this Padres person. This is one person briefed on the team's financials. I don't know if this is the person literally saying there's 25 other people that own the club, but he did say in a quote here, it's not as simple as Peter saying, oh, we're all going to put in more money because you got like 25 other people that own the club that are like, hey, just because you decided to have a $270 million payroll doesn't mean I want to go out of my pocket to pay it. It's just not as simple as maybe some other situations. And what that person is referring to is maybe some other situations where there's one person that is the owner of the team. And it's them paying everything. That's just the way it is with the Padres. They've got Peter Seidler. He is the majority owner, but then there's minority owners. There's Peter Seidler's uh, equity group and people that are helping the Padres out there, right? We know about that. Ron Fowler, I believe, is still a minority owner of the team. What does he think about Peter Seidler wanting to have a $250 million payroll? Does he want to contribute out of his pocket to help pay when Peter Seidler comes to him and says, hey, Ron, uh, we need to take out a $50 million loan. Hey, to lower that loan, do you want to pay some of this, pay a couple million dollars so we can lower this loan? Maybe some of these other owners, and there's a bunch of owners that we don't know about, I guess, if this is true, that there's over 20 other people that are owning this club um, other than just Peter Seidler, right? Those people... I guarantee you some of those people are not super happy with how much money Peter Seidler is putting into this team because they don't want to pay as much money as maybe they're paying or what Peter Seidler wants those people to pay to help this team out. So there's disagreements there. Like there's a lot of things that go into this. And by the way, the Padres... They made a presentation to the league about the club's finances to like, so they like presented to Major League Baseball, at least this is my understanding of how they're going to get back to where it's okay to be payroll wise under Major League Baseball's like debt service stuff where they'll be back in the good graces of Major League Baseball where they're supposed to be because they're in more debt. At least that's what I'm understanding here. They're in more debt than what Major League Baseball allows, more debt than what they're than what they can pay back. That's why they're asking for these big loans, I would imagine. And so Major League Baseball is like, you got to get under this certain money here. You got to get under this certain threshold because we're looking at your books, which Major League Baseball I think has the authority to do. Could be wrong on that, but I assume that they do to make sure all of their owners are in line just to look out for their owners, right? 
because Manfred works for the owners. It's not like he, it's not like the owners work for him. Making sure that all the owners are in line and they're looking at the Padres and they're like, you guys, you need to lower what you're doing here. You're, you're not going to be in a good spot if you keep doing this. You can't keep doing this. So the Padres are going to have to find a way to get under whatever number it needs to be. And that might, like I said earlier, it might include trading Juan Soto because he's expected to make $33 million this coming season in his last year of arbitration before he can be a free agent after the 2024 season. And that makes it much easier to get to significantly lower the payroll is you trade Juan Soto. That's 30 plus million dollars that you don't have to cover now. And then let's say you bring in an outfielder for like a one year deal worth like $7 million or $10 million, whatever. Okay. So you saved over $20 million by doing that. Or maybe you bring him in an even cheaper guy that's making like nothing, but he's talented and you can get that guy back in a Juan Soto trade like someone like Pete Crow Armstrong. I'm throwing that name out there. I don't know if the Cubs would be willing to give him up, but hey, sometimes you got to take risks. Pete Crow Armstrong's making like nothing. Potters would save a lot of money and that would really help bring in their payroll down if they can trade Juan Soto. But I, I still don't want them to trade Juan Soto. I think some Padres fans are like, that's what's best for this Padres franchise long term. But I mean, it's not like they, it's not like we can sit here and be like, well, they made the World Series with Juan Soto. All right, we can trade him. We haven't gotten to that point with Juan Soto. And we were promised, I know things changed, but we were promised that we're getting Juan Soto for three pennant races. AJ Preller said that, and I know he lies, so we shouldn't take everything that he says as the gospel. But we were promised at that press conference when they acquired Juan Soto that they got him for three pennant races. And three pennant races is impossible because they missed the postseason this year. But what about two? To only have it at one and you give up on the Juan Soto contract before you even go into year three? That will be another bad look on this Padres franchise. All right. let me. I'm just scrolling through this article just seeing if there's anything of note here, according to officials briefed on the team's thinking, payroll in 2024 is expected to be closer to $200 million. We knew that. The team might need to trade Soto to reach that goal. Soto remains unlikely to sign an extension and could be due more than $30 million in his final season before free agency. That's obviously a huge question in this offseason. Will the Padres trade Juan Soto? Do they need to trade Juan Soto? Because I don't think A.J. Preller wants to trade Juan Soto if he's trying to win in 2024. I think that would be stupid on his part. Like You, you think that you're going to be a better spot to win if you, by trading Juan Soto? I just don't see that. But he might need to because of the situation that he, the Padres, Peter Seidler, has put this organization in. But we knew, we knew this already. Unlikely to sign an extension. I don't see it happening. Payroll expected to be closer to $200 million. We knew that. And as, as the days passed, Dick Monford and Rob Manfred, they sure seem like they knew what they were talking about, questioning the sustainability of this Padres payroll and what the Padres were doing and questioning the depth of the Padres team. They were right, at least in 2023, and it pains me to say that, but they were right. All right, that's going to do it. Episode 506, Talking Friars, brought to you by... Gaglione Bros, famous cheesesteaks and garlic fries. Their main location on Friars Road. They're going to be at Snapdragon Stadium this weekend for San Diego State football and San Diego Wave semifinal match. Wave against O.L. Reign could be Megan Rapinoe's final match ever. San Diego Wave with a win. They advance to the NWSL championship game, which is November 11th at Snapdragon Stadium. SeatGeek code talking Friars $20 off your order there. Underdog Fantasy 100% deposit match up to $500. Click that link in the description for that. Use code Talking Friars. That will help there. Pick'ems, drafts, a bunch of different sports. Baseball season's over, but there's still a ton of options there on Underdog Fantasy. Breaking Tea, great San Diego sports swag. Padres, Aztecs, Wave, check them out. Click the link in the description there. Foco, Padres bobbleheads and collectibles. Click the link in the description there if you want some bobbleheads. Could be an early Christmas present, holiday 
gift that you that you might want to think about. Seat Geek, maybe you got some tickets that you want to go buy in advance. Breaking tea, maybe a shirt, sweatshirts, who knows? Help, just helping you out there. Please support uh, the partners of the show. Thank you all for tuning in, watching, listening to the show here. As always, I appreciate it. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so if you want to know when every video drops, every live stream goes live. Turn on the notification bell. I'm not someone that begs you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You know, every episode at the beginning, at the in the middle, at the end of every episode, not going to do that. If you like the content, you're going to subscribe. But there are some people that I do see in the comments or on social media that ask, hey, when I don't see when you go live. Well, make sure you're subscribed, turn on the notifications, and that is how you will know when I go live, when I do live streams. Again, thank you so much for all the support, for tuning in. I really, really appreciate everyone. And that is that. I'll keep you updated, obviously, on the manager search. We'll see what happens there. And there's a lot to talk about coming up in the offseason.